The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we've been a little up. We've been a little bit down on the S&P cash. NASDAQ off 26. Russell's up one and a half. Uh, the Dow's up 116. I think that's mostly on Boeing's back. Saw that it was up 10 bucks earlier in the day. Uh, probably getting fairly. Ah, come on. Ah. Yeah. There we go. Come on. Give. There we go. Yeah, it's up 10 bucks. Up uh, two and a half percent. I suspect that's mostly. That I didn't look through the rest of it, but uh, again, not much else happening out here in the broader markets other than the NASDAQ is down a little bit. One of the stocks that we did talk about the last few days, as I said, I didn't like the way these things were looking, uh, starting to see them kind of rotate back into the trading range. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that today. Uh, as uh, the show starts, um, of course, uh, we've got uh, Elon Musk from Tesla, who has to uh, stand in front of a judge and tell him why, and tell her, I guess it is, uh, why uh, uh, what uh, he, she told her, told him to do, he did anyway. And uh, this all goes back to him, uh, one uh, tweet away, being a little drunk and high on an airplane, coming back and tweeting away, uh, that he had uh, funding to buy out at $420 on Tesla. Uh, the only reason he did that was to run the shorts out. Uh, unfortunately, it's illegal because you cannot lie uh, as the head of a company. And he did lie. Well, there was put no bouts, doubts about it. He talked to a few people, but there was no, uh, as it will now be uh, famous, funding secured. Uh, as he put in his tweet, there was no funding secured. There was bar barely a conversation. And uh, he, I think he kind of said, Do you know what, uh, 420, and we probably sell out now. And the, uh, the Saudis looking to invest said, uh, yeah, well, think about it. Well, that is not funding secured. You can't lie. The only thing he wanted to do is cause a huge short squeeze because uh, he's got some real problems below about 240 bucks uh, and uh, existential problems below 200 bucks on Tesla, uh, mostly because uh, he's jacked the price up uh, with his own uh, financial shenanigans. And those all come down. Now, in the last, well, about a month ago, uh, in fact, actually March 1st, he had to uh, come up with a bunch of cash. He has borrowed $100 million on all his California housing. Uh, probably not a good idea. Uh, and the question is, how is he going to raise the rest of the cash that he is needing now that the news came out this morning before the bell, uh, which is why it's off almost 9% or 25 bucks, uh, that they are not making the production numbers. Um, and sometime around 11, 1130, um, we also saw some reports they are unsubstantiated at the moment, uh, but they uh, look like Musk rented out a, uh, or Tesla, I guess, probably by his order, rented out a abandoned, uh, what we call it, I guess shopping mall, that's a way to put it, and hid all the cars, but not on the ground level where you could drive by and see them. He actually put them on the levels uh, as high as you can get without being on the roof and seeing them. So literally, you have to kind of go in the, inside the thing. And he got security guards. But apparently, uh, he packed a bunch of cars in there that are not for sale. 
And the question is whether or not these are brand new cards. Are these the cards that have come back on the lease that he's showing on his books? Because if he actually sold them, what would happen? Well, he wouldn't sell a new car. And two, if the car isn't what it's worth, then he has to mark down all the rest of the cars. So yeah, it is going to be one of those teachable moments uh, where everybody shakes their fist at finances and uh, uh, basically a, uh, commonly a, a uh, thought of business practices uh, financially. Uh, this is not a company where he can just magically snap his fingers and start get 70% margins. Uh, if you've listened to my uh, conversation with Tom O'Brien on Friday, we went through all the $9,000 a car that he's not going to get in the next nine months as those things go away. In fact, he's going to lose another $3,500 July 1st. A lot of thought is that he was trying to get as many as these cars out, but the uh, the probably the prediction of paying a lot more over the next nine or 10 months uh, or 12 months in comparison to cars coming in from other companies, both foreign and domestic, uh, those guys will still have uh, up to $20,000, depending on the price of the car, in tax incentives uh, to go up against a company that is running out of its tax incentives in most of uh, the United States. And, uh, in fact, uh, some of the uh, cars were or company, uh, uh, companies, countries where it's more uh, uh, popular, like Norway and, and uh, others that have a lot of hydroelectric power, they got more electricity than they know what to do with. Well, they're also kind of cutting back on all of those tax incentives uh, to get people to, to go to that. And, of course, those are the guys that made all their money off the uh, North Sea oil. So we have uh, a lot of stuff going on. And, again, that uh, it'd be interesting if I wasn't on the air just to watch the stock price. My guess is that there's somebody in the back of that courtroom with a uh, uh, sitting there texting away. Uh, to investors on the street telling them what the judge is and is not say, uh, saying. Uh, but it was scheduled to start at 2. I'm assuming it has. Uh, it got down to about uh, $260 trading at 266.83. But certainly a real-time indication of what's going to happen today. But um, I, I don't know. I, I don't think there's a lot of mystery. Uh, both Musk and the SEC said that there was no reason to have a hearing. So there's something the judge is looking for uh, to hang her hat on so someone doesn't come back and try to overrule her. She's probably looking for something very specific, so we'll see what that is. But, uh, yeah, you got it. And uh, the one thing that I come back over and over again is something that I heard uh, several weeks ago. All right. But it's been something that's been around. I write all this stuff down, by the way, for people that ask me. But I saw this, and I uh, I knew uh, there was one thing that was very important uh, that Jim Chena said last fall. I just happened to stumble upon it. But he was talking about uh, many of the tech companies. In tech, if you're perceived to be changing the world, it's okay to lie to investors. Jim Chena is a pretty smart guy. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1949, I forgot to put the 49 in there, didn't I? There we got 1949. In real time, I fixed it. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is established by 12 Western nations: the United States, Great Britain, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, Italy, uh, Luxembourg. I can't forget the massive uh, military might of Luxembourg. Norway, uh, Iceland, Canada, Portugal. Uh, the military alliance, which provided for a collective self-defense against Soviet aggression, greatly increased Americans' influence in Europe. And of course, uh, we're now seeing uh, the Russians and the Chinese trying to invade uh, Venezuela, keep a toehold in that state, which is probably only going to do them worse. I don't know whether or not we're going to get involved or not, but a lot of people are saying, well, this could be the fire that starts World War III. I don't think we're going to let it, or most people are going to let it get there. One of the things that Russians can't do, along with the Chinese, is project power uh, militarily very far. Russians do have a little island uh, off the uh, Venezuela coast. They sent a couple of hundred uh, thugs in over the last couple of days to uh, uh, go after anybody that uh, even speaks ill about communism and Stalinism that Venezuela's had over the last uh, 10 or 20 years. Of course, I continue to be amazed. But here, my, many people, in fact, uh, yes, what was it, Tuesday, many of the uh, people elected in Chicago uh, outright Stalinists. So we do have to kind of keep an eye on the fact that we have some people that are literally politically insane. Uh, and uh, all you can do is go through history in 6,000 years to find out that it doesn't work. And they always say the same thing. It's different this time because we're running it. And it's not. It always ends up as uh, one famous guy. I'm trying to remember his name now. Anyway, uh, communism starts with a gun to your head. Socialism ends with a gun to your head. Uh, and, of course, we're all capitalists here because we trade and make money. And we have no apologies for it. On this day in 1949, NATO starts, but uh, maybe dissolving. We do not know. Okay, let's start looking at some charts. As I said yesterday, um, 
Where is it at? Oh, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this one. There we go. Uh, we started seeing some st uh, stocks start to roll over. Uh, and let's see, AD, if I can actually put it in there, AD, E, let's do this, Adobe, and let's make it a little easier on everybody here. We'll just make it black and white. Um, started to roll over. I saw it yesterday, and that's one of the reasons why I thought that it was probably a good time to sell our trade uh, in the IYT that did very well. Now, it, the question, I guess, comes back in for the rest of the day uh, if we're going to see more of these. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at Boeing, too, but Adobe seemed to be uh, the weakest of the bunch and really had a, uh, a bad reaction to earnings. Uh, that was uh, that was back on the 15th of uh, March, and you came down, came down with a lot of volume. Uh, rotated today, don't have volume yet, but it's not the end of the day. We also talked about how it's kind of natural to have a few days of pullback after fund buying, because basically they try to get the stocks up as high as possibly uh, as they can to sell to the 401s, because those people have to buy. At the first of the month, it kind of, I always figured that there should be some kind of lottery where they're spread out all over the month, but hey, I'm not the president, although I would be willing to stand in and rule you all with an iron fist and a velvet glove. Just remember that. If, you, if need be, not saying I will, but if need be, I'd stand in. Uh, anyway, uh, I, there's a handful of these stocks uh, that I saw yesterday that you know, you just really didn't have any energy. You were going back up against uh, the upper part of a trend line. And not uncommon to see kind of a little pullback. Now we get into uh, options expiration starting next Wednesday. And it's not uh, unexpected to see kind of a handful of days that are lower into that Wednesday. And then the bullish bias through it. Now, one of the things we have, of course, right now is um, uh, other things prevailing in the market. Uh, what I wanted to also bring up today uh, was housing sales in Florida. <laughs> now, I don't have a good chart to show you on it. All we have is numbers, and I heard them uh, come out. I think it was just about lunchtime. Uh, but a, about a year ago, about 50% of the houses sold in Florida had to have the price reduced uh, at least once or twice to sell them. Uh, now we're up uh, over 80%, and in the lead is both uh, the East and West Coast uh, leaders, uh, both Miami and Tampa. Now, why is that important? Well, because most of the pullbacks in the larger uh, markets for uh, real estate started down in Florida. Uh, it seems to be one of the uh, preeminent boom-bust cycles that are around. Uh, and certainly it, it was sig significant uh, what we have now. Now, some of the thoughts are that uh, especially New York is making it incredibly hard uh, for uh, their citizens to escape the uh, Stalin-like tax structures that they have out there. Even going so far as saying, hey, you can move to Florida. Can't stop you there. But you know what? You're going to pay taxes just like you lived up here. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter whether you never come back, uh, you can fight us in court. We'll just drag you into court. And, of course, our uh, uh, sycophantic judges will continue to get it. And that's kind of hurt some of that trade that we've had for the last three or four years of people moving out of the high-tax state, New Jersey, uh, New York, uh, and California. Although we don't get as many Californians, those guys tend to go more uh, to the dry, arid kind of places of uh, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and Texas for some reason, especially Austin for California folks. So we can see that. So there is a little bit of uh, not silver lining, but kind of a dark lining on some fine clouds, at least in the housing business. And a poor, I think a little bit of that is just the hiccup we got from interest rates going higher. Now, of course, they're back lower. Uh, but 
you know, we need, especially in Florida, to keep uh, the bull in the uh, China shop running down in Florida. We need a little bit more in that housing. Now, does that directly affect the stock market today? It does not. Um, could we get a turnaround in those numbers in the months ahead? Uh, it is certainly anything is possible. But it's cert when I looked at the data at about noon, it was interesting. So we may have a tale of two cities, rich man, poor man kind of thing, where we have more industrial kinds of businesses doing a little bit less well, and technology and big things like airline, uh, airline, uh, Boeing and um, tech companies uh, that don't rely a lot on tax structures uh, to move forward. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And we're back up uh, two points. Eh, yeah, two points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 135. Nasdaq's down just 12. Russell's up two. Crude oil down about 14 cents. Uh, gold up buck 60. Silver up a penny. And uh, when we look at uh, the almighty dollar, up 26 cents, 96, 925. Certainly. Um, Challenging that $97 level again. That certainly looked like a failure, uh, but now maybe a bear trap on the dollar. 
So got to keep an eye on that. But uh, not having much effect in the broader markets at the moment. Uh, nothing coming our way in earnings, at least uh, for the next few days. Just look ahead tomorrow. Nothing tomorrow. Monday. Can I see anything? Well, I think we're closed on Monday, aren't we? Um, oh. Next Wednesday, we've got Delta Airlines before the bell. Bed, bath, and below after the bell. Uh, anything else in there? No, pretty spotty earnings. Not much going on. So, again, we've talked about how that's probably going to be um, a little uh, sideways in this market, maybe a little bit of a pullback over the next few days. And then we're going to see whether we have any energy to go tackle the highs anytime soon. Now, why don't we go back to some of the lists that we were looking at earlier and see how they've developed. Uh, two, two, two. I wanted to look at a handful of these. Amgen, a quick look at that. And you've got not a lot of volume, but it certainly you spiked yesterday's high and reversed a little bit lower on light volume. What else do we have out here? Oh, yeah, and I wanted to get to that. Amazon also has, uh, I wanted to see how that did. Didn't seem, uh, apparently the divorce has gone through. Jeff Bezos keeps 75% of all the shares and all 100% of his voting rights. So basically he is king. Nothing going to happen in there. Uh, but that 25%, I guess you can still sell. I read through the articles. I can't find much in the way there. A lot of people were thinking, well, she just goes to a fire sale and starts selling it all. Doesn't sound like that. Um, but, uh, I don't know, $37 billion? Yeah, so she sells a billion. I don't know if she'll be able to go through that in the next six months. She looks like a, a fairly normal woman. Not the kind of extravagant diamond-wearing kind. You know, just the regular running suit, lots of exercise, sun, eating banana kind of gal. So it doesn't look like she'd go through that money that quickly. Not like the girlfriend who kind of looked a little gold diggerish, but you never know. Anyway, we're saying at these highs in Amazon, no real pullback. Don't know if you can say anything other than we're just a little lower. Uh, certainly smacks of a trading range back down to about 1750 on Amazon. Let's take a look at a few other. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I got some emails here. Oh, you can call me at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always leave a message in the den, even though it's quiet. Very, very quiet. Well, hunting rabbits. Let's take a look at uh, Boeing and see anything. We were talking, a lot of people asked me about what to do in Boeing, and I said, you probably wanted to see something in that 105 area uh, before, or 405 area before you thought about shorting. And again, you're going back into that on light volume. In fact, let's uh, take a look and see what the shorts have been doing with Boeing the last few days and see if they've been uh, all over it. If they haven't been, you might have a play if they're all over it. Now, well, I tell you what, uh, yeah, pretty good indication. Uh, when shorts start shorting heavily, it's almost always a sign that the stock's gonna go up at least in the short term. And we had 20% uh, of all sales on the 28th uh, were short sales. When you went to the 29th, you got to almost 25%. And then, of course, as soon as that happens, you start seeing the closing prices go higher. Now, the last couple of days, you're about 15%, but that probably still kind of high. So you want to look at it probably at 405, 410 area before this thing probably hits resistance. Just too many shorts, probably easy to squeeze them out over the next couple of days, which would probably put uh, a little bit of uh, uh, air in the sales of the Dow, but probably not much in the rest of everything. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? I want to look at some other stocks. I did not know. You know what we were doing? We were going through 
the NASDAQ yesterday and pointing some of these that look like they were ready to roll over. I wanted to look at FDX, too, see if these were about ready to start breaking out. I don't see much in the way of these either. Uh, they're just up to resistance level. FedEx up today uh, against the, this ledge that goes back uh, to the first week of February, uh, right in this, uh, eh, what, was it, what are we going to call this? Uh, 185s, 187s. And the last time you were up here, you had about 1.8 million shares. Today, you're up with about 750,000 shares so far. So again, you continue to hold these highs uh, as we went through a lot of these stocks yesterday. You're just not seeing the volume that says these things want to go higher. Uh, to do let's see what else we have in my list of stuff. 3M, I haven't looked at this one for a while. Uh, also coming back and finishing up a gap down that started October 9th of last year. That was uh, 3 million shares on the downside. Uh, two days ago, you had 1.4 million shares yesterday, 1.6 million shares. Today, about 830,000 shares so far with uh, an hour and, what, 20 minutes left to go in the day. Um, so again, you continue on a lot of these stocks not to significantly roll over, pull back on light volume, but get up to these highs, not see a lot of people wanting to buy the breakout, but certainly every pullback gets bought, or at least has up to this point. Let's see what else is out here that I wanted to keep a close eye on. Eh, let's take a look at some others out here. Let's go back to this one. I think this is the list. Uh, to do, we looked at Amgen, um, AOS, which is uh, AO Smith. Again, we were talking about the uh, weakness in the Florida housing market, uh, at least since the beginning of the year, maybe even back into December. Uh, you got a handful of dojis out here. Now, they make hot water heaters, and generally, of course, the new house, you're going to get a hot water heater or two in it. Now, depending on whether you live down here or up north. Uh, but uh, the last big spike was the 25th of February. You had 2.2 million shares. You got into it with 1.3 million shares on the 1st. Uh, two days ago, 1 million shares. Uh, yesterday, 1 million shares. Today, just 550,000 shares. So, again, you know, most of these things are fairly good telegraphers of the profits to come. So uh, just keep an eye on them. We don't have any significant signals yet. But uh, a lot of uh, kind of shading around the corners at the moment and edges. We'll be back in just a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. As we look at Netflix, yeah, just a lot of stuff, again, for the general market. There's not a, a, a lot out here that says, you know, or, or is screaming, let me put it that way. Let's get back to that. Uh, up one uh, and a half on, oh, on gold. Let's move this back over. How do I, why is that doing that? That's why. Uh, up three points on the S&P cash up 145 on the Dow. NASDAQ off eight now. So we're getting a little bit of a fallback. But again, not much. Up three on the uh, Russell. Uh, question about uh, crude has come in. I said that there was a bullish bias pretty much through here. And when does that bias uh, actually tend to roll over uh, for the uh, fuel change from the winter to summer? formula for gasoline and that is about now um, anywhere from about the 7th to the 15th of april seems to be that and i was out at lunch today saw gas about 290 and i thought okay that's starting to get a little problematic uh for the psyche of the uh, downtrodden in america uh, of course that's a direct tax off uh, what they have to spend to get to work every day. So it is one of those things that does tend to change and get them a little bit more upset and a little bit uh, bearish uh, on the economy, even though it may be doing well. But, uh, you know, we're probably getting fairly close to some level where you, I think you could short crude, but it's probably just about done. And I don't know uh, if I want to be in it from 62 to get to 50. I generally don't I want to see stuff that, that's 20%, but that, uh, you know, that's kind of a tough road. I don't know if it's going to make that much different in the actual price of the underlying companies, the energy companies themselves. But uh, even when you look like the uh, OIH, it's really, these things have just really been going sideways since almost the beginning of the year. So again, man, what can you say? Uh, other questions about what's going on, uh, GLD, eh, you know, you get three or four more days uh, out. You kind of look like you're finding support out here. I would like to see there's this gap, turnaround gap from the 26th of December. And I'd like to see some kind of piercing of that and a rejection of it. Um, you may not get it. I see... You know, you can pretty much draw a ruler on these levels right at about 121 and see that that's where people are starting to maybe accumulate it. You did have kind of a major failure out here. It doesn't mean that it's going lower, uh, but uh, I don't see a lot of reason to get into this unless you saw a good uh, or the easiest signal, let me put it that way, would be a move down to 120 on the GLD that gets rejected. I don't see much in the way of that yet. Uh, to, 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 we did FX, FDX. What else do we want to look at out here? Uh, to, 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 to. A few lists on me. Uh, okay. 
Someone wants me to look at a Vago, a VGO. Uh, okay. Uh, again, you had decent reaction to earnings, although the earnings weren't that good. Just a lot of people were short Broadcom uh, Avago going into its earnings on the 15th of March. You've slowly moved up, but there really has never been a sign of strength other than that first day. And volume is rather poor. You've got last four days, 2.7 million shares, 2.3 million shares. Yesterday, 2.3 million shares. Today, just 990,000 shares. So again, we're going to we'll be watching very closely what happens into the end of the trading day. Um, other signs that we may be close to having some kind of significant high in this market uh, is McDonald's. Generally, when people start feeling a crunch or maybe a recession coming on, they tend to eat at McDonald's instead of uh, Olive Garden and uh, Chili's. And you start seeing McDonald's go a little higher. I don't know if you could still say that, but you can say that McDonald's uh, November 29th high at 190.88 had 4.6 million shares. You spiked into that on the first with 3.2 million shares. Another spike into it today, which is 1.4 million shares. So it doesn't look to me like everybody's piling in at these highs, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been sounding the clarion for much lower prices and to go short. Um, but uh, we shall see again the end of the day. I don't expect we're going to see much of anything um, until probably tomorrow. As we go into the weekend, I think a lot of people are going to say, yeah, we haven't heard any news in the last 10 minutes about the trade deal. So what are we going to do? Uh, to, 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 what else? A handful of other people wanted to look at some stuff. And uh, back, why don't we do this? Uh, to, 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 we're back in the queues. We looked at the queues yesterday. Let's look at a handful of other ones. As I was showing, a lot of these were up there at the highs with light volume. Oh, we have Dave from Framingham uh, on AKS. How are you doing today? Hi, David. Thank you for taking my call. Um, can we take a look? I mean, a, a look at AKS here. Certainly can. What are you thinking on this? I think it's, I'm waiting for it to get cut through the three because uh, back in October when the S&P was at the, the the high there at 2940, thinking it might just break out of here. With uh, didn't we talk things. about this? Didn't we talk about this a few weeks ago? Yeah, a few weeks ago, but it's been climbing a little bit here. Yeah, and I, th I think nothing's changed, and that nothing's is changed. this is a big uh, call on the trade deal coming through. Yeah. And you're probably not going to see a lot. Your trade deal goes through, probably goes to the moon. Trade deal probably didn't go through. You probably pull back a little. So yeah. I don't know if you can, you know, you came down with some significant gusto off that 329. And I don't think anything's literally changed in this whole thing, which is trade deal goes through. Maybe it does a bit better because they get protected. Yeah. And probably should be strategically for the company's, uh, country's defense. You know, it makes a lot of sense that we have our own ability to build our own carriers without having to try to buy steel from Japan or yeah, more likely China, right? So right. I don't know. I don't know what you think. Is there something you think is going on in the steel industry or the general economy that's going to make this thing move before well, then? I, well, they, they, they were, you know, predicting a loss last quarter, and they came out with a 16-cent profit. Um, uh, they supply 50% of the autos with the steel. Plus yeah, everything but that, else autos, are slow, autos are slowing down. They are. Um, housing but, slowing. Housing slowing down. But we're having more, car, you know, car, uh, producers are coming back this way. Crisis is going to open up a plant out here somewhere. Yeah, place. I just don't see it Manny, making a major <laughs> dent in all uh, that. I mean, I mean the, the, thing, the thing that would really change the future of AK Steel and make me want to buy it would be that there was enough uh, protectionism in uh, what's coming from the trade deal yeah. to mean that we would buy the steel from here instead of China. All I right. think that's the one abiding case you have for higher prices. Okay. Thanks for the call. Okay, we'll be back you. and close up with the last segment.
I'm certain are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's New Insider is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, we're up almost five now on the S&P. Dow's up 158. Nasdaq's off five. So again, eh, just a tiny bit, but again, um, doesn't look like the volume is going to be much of anything. We're doing about 4.3 billion shares, if this is correct. Yeah, 4.3 billion shares. This is going to be an extremely light volume day. And, man, this may get us to, at this rate, we're due maybe 6.3 billion compared to about 7 billion or over it for the last few days. So going to be extremely light volume tomorrow is going to be very important. And that we didn't get much in the way of gusto today probably tells you a great deal. Um, what else do we have? Let's check the emails, make sure I didn't miss anything before the uh, close. And nothing there. A uh, question about looking at Microsoft if there's anything going on up there other than a test of the high, just like everything else, 30 million shares on March 21st. Uh, again, 30 million shares today, 13.6 uh, million so far. Yesterday, you had 22.8 million into that high. A little bit of a reversal. As I'm saying, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Maybe we get a little bit of that taken out by the end of the day, but certainly there's not a lot of people flooding in to buy this, which makes me think they're going to wait once again for any pullback to jump on the market. Uh, and until then, probably not getting a lot. Uh, question about looking at the airlines. Uh, you got a doji 
in United Continental so far today with almost no volume, 1.3 million shares. Compared to 4 million shares yesterday, 3.8 million shares before. So again, just a dearth, a speck of volume, uh, but uh, not the kind of candle that would say that you wanted to pull the trigger. And again, I continue to wait uh, for uh, some level of uh, puncture of a three by three displaced moving average to say that these things are for sale. No signals yet, but certainly nothing to say that we're going higher or much higher either. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.